So Jono, did you see this in theaters? I did, in California. I saw it opening day in Salt Lake City and the audience was so hyped for it, they actually jumped and screamed for this. Well, yeah. I mean, I tried to watch this movie with my kids and half of them cleared out during the opening credits because they just couldn't handle it. We should do an episode about like, group psychology. That's a thing, right? It is, yes. Welcome to Cinema Therapy. I'm Jonathan Decker, I'm a licensed therapist, and I love movies. And I'm Alan Seawright, I'm a filmmaker, and I need therapy. And today we're talking about Signs, the 2002 alien slash home invasion thriller directed by M. Night Shyamalan. This is another in our series Coping with Quarantine, because this family is coping with something that a lot of us are dealing with right now. Blank. Staring. Faces. It had to be at that right moment. That 10, 15 seconds when I passed her walking. Or being trapped in a house with people you don't get along with all the time. Like I said. So in Signs, we have a recently widowed... Widow word? Something. Reverend. His two children. And Joaquin Phoenix playing the least Joaquin Phoenix character of all time. <laughs> My life is nothing but a comedy. This isn't about a tour. This isn't about a song. Am I not merciful? This family, like most of us, is largely confined to their home, trying to protect themselves from an outside threat. But in this case, it's revealed to be an alien invasion. They're forced to confront the issues they've been avoiding in their relationships, and there's a lot going on there. After the death of the mother, hope is in short supply. There's love in the family, but Mel Gibson's character, Graham, is no longer in a position to give anyone any sort of uplift, since his wife and his faith were the source of light in his life. That light has now gone out. There is no one watching out for us, Meryl. We are all on our own. Joaquin Phoenix's character, Meryl... How's work at the gas station? Stimulating. ...is doing what he can to help the family not descend into misery and depression. I never got a chance to tell you, but I, I thought you moving in here with your brother after... It was a nice thing to do. Well, I don't think I'm up much. You are. What I like the most about Meryl's character is the internal consistency in the writing. I wish you were my dad. What did you say? Just like the way he plays baseball, he's hard hitting. Don't you ever say anything like that again. Ever. He is tough love. He calls people out and wakes them up. I don't want to ever see your eyes like that again. Okay? I'm serious. One thing I've noticed about tough love, it only works when people feel loved and respected. People will accept any feedback you give them as long as they feel respected and loved. Meryl is great with this. He's great at bonding with the kids, not talking down to them and not judging them. Their skin changes colors. That's why we couldn't see him that night. Meryl also helps Graham wake up to his role as father and his children's need for him to give them light, encouragement, love, and hope. Graham's identity was always tied to his faith, his role as reverend, and being a husband. He lost himself when he lost his wife and ultimately abandoned his trust in a higher power. Although the film is ultimately about him regaining that faith, an interesting, albeit more subtle, journey occurs as Graham steps fully into the role of parent in his wife's absence. He learns that even in the midst of his grief and his fear, he can still give hope and encouragement to others. Now, following Graham's lead, this is an action step you can take. Think of someone you know who needs hope and encouragement right now. Can't think of anybody? Scroll through your social media for a little while. I promise you'll find someone. Look for those whose posts suggest discouragement and loneliness. Trust me, you're gonna find them. He goes from Riley mocking his children. How could anyone possibly know that information? It's ridiculous. And scolding them. You're too old to still be doing this. You take a glass of water and you finish it. Now what's wrong with this one? To lashing out because of his own fear and anger. Now we are going to enjoy this meal. No one can stop us from enjoying this meal, so enjoy it! Stop crying! The shift happens when Graham realizes that he's hurting and afraid just like they are. When he breaks down crying and Morgan shows him love coming to him, he then reaches over to Bo and to Meryl. Graham is recognizing something crucial here. Beneath all anger is a more vulnerable emotion. Anytime we're angry, 
were actually scared, hurting, embarrassed, overwhelmed, or some other vulnerable emotion. We express it as anger because anger feels powerful. We aren't saying a prayer. The problem is that anger pushes people Eat. away. I hate you. But vulnerability draws them close. That's fine. When he expresses his own vulnerability, his own fear and pain, his son is able to feel compassion for him and he for his son. Morgan reaches out to comfort his father as he's done for Bo throughout the film. I won't let anything bad happen to you. Morgan offers hope. Graham, in fact, relearns how to hope in part from Morgan. And that's why this scene at the dinner table is the crucial turning point for Graham. From that moment of vulnerability onward, Graham is able to step up. He's able to connect, provide, protect, and give hope. Which leads us to another thing you can do right now. Once you identify that person who's hurting, start by listening and empathizing. Say something like, it seems like you're having a hard time. Tell me about it. Listen and just empathize. I love the two conversations he has with his children about the days that they were born. Comforting them and showing them real love during moments of terror when the aliens are trying to break into the house. He gives them hope. Not that everything will be all right, but in knowing how loved and adored they are, no matter what happens, how special they are to him. I really like the scene where Morgan has an asthma attack in the basement and Graham just holds him. We don't have his medicine. Talks him through how to breathe, urging him to do as he does. Feel it moving in and out. Breathe like me. He gives his son hope verbally and physically, along with instructions while being held and reassured. So the director does something really interesting with this scene. Generally, for a big emotional moment like this one, you'd be in close-up right on your characters' faces. You want people to feel the emotions that they feel, and so you give the audience their eyes. But here, we're off to the side. We're emotionally distant because Graham, while giving his son hope, has none himself. He's lying. Don't do this to me again. Not again. He has returned to belief this is actually a prayer, but it's just one without hope. I hate you. I hate you. He no longer doubts God's existence, he just rages at God's indifference. Like us right now, the Hesses weren't sure what the future had in store for them, but they had each other. And while the film builds to a comforting declaration of a higher power looking out for all of us, and to Graham's renewal of his faith and role as reverend, he also discovers his own capacity to feel hope That's and bring it to those he loves apart from his faith in God and his relationship in his wife. Those are the two things on which he leaned on exclusively before. He finds that power in himself through vulnerability and selflessly turning outward to comfort those in need with direct assurance that it would be all right. Can someone save me? I think someone did or by helping them to know that, even if the worst happened, they wouldn't have to suffer through their hardships alone, that they would have somebody who loved them with them. Which leads us to another action you can take. If you have practical advice and realistic hope for improving things, ask your suffering friends and family if they would like to hear it and then share it. Swing away, Meryl. However, if the situation just seems dire, with no end in sight, and you don't have any good advice or realistic assurances, how can you, like Graham, help this person feel that they're not alone, that they're appreciated and loved, and you're there for them? Rediscovering his faith and going back to church is not the actual end of this story. The end of this story, the emotional arc, is when real change occurs when Graham discovers that as scared as he is, as grief-stricken as he is, That's why he, had asthma. he still has real power to give hope to others and step into his own strength while doing so. It can't be luck. His lungs were closed. His lungs were closed. No poison got in. No poison got in. His lungs were closed. His lungs were Graham taking up the mantle at the end of the movie is a coda. It's not the end of the story arc. That's already occurred. It's just a nice thing to tack on. And it's a good coda, especially if you believe in a higher power. But even if you don't have that belief, there's still a lot of meaning in this film. Just a reminder, here are your action steps for this week. Number one, think of someone you know who could use hope and encouragement right now. Can't think of anybody? Look through your social media, you'll find them. Number two, listen and empathize. Ask them what they're going through and just listen. Number three, offer practical advice and realistic hope if you can. And if you can't, give them assurance that they're not alone and that they are loved. So we're starting something new this week. We asked all of you for your insights on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
And it turns out, uh, you people are not dumb. It's true. Over on our Instagram, Angela gave this pearl. I remember my sister said, what doesn't make sense, makes sense eventually. I love that. Your sister's wise. On our Facebook, Diego added, I think sometimes a very dramatic or traumatic event can shake our basic beliefs. When adversity strikes, we have two choices. We can succumb to them or we can rise to the occasion. In the first case, he succumbed. But the second time, since he knew his family was in danger, he chose to rise up. Action is what strengthened and restored his beliefs. What were your takeaways from Signs and how has it helped you? We want to hear your wisdom. Leave it in the comments below. I promise we read them. And as always, like, subscribe, hit the bell, purchase or rent the movie using our link below in case you want to watch the movie. If you need more help than a YouTube video can provide, I offer telehealth counseling as well as online relationship courses. There's a link in the description where you can schedule a complimentary 15 minute consultation with me. Thanks for joining us again as we're all still stuck at home during quarantine. Please leave comments below about what films you'd like us to watch, what topics you'd like us to cover, and remember, mental health issues are not your fault, but they are your responsibility. Till next time, take care, stay safe, connect with loved ones, and watch, watch movies. movies. is marked in crops and such. None of them are really near water. I don't think they like water. Okay, I just have to, I just have to. So an alien race that can travel interstellar distances and has impenetrable cloaking technology. <sighs> Here it comes. Has one glaring weakness and comes to a planet that is 70% that weakness. Look, man, it's a solid little thriller. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, didn't you cry when Morgan was dying? I didn't cry. You cried. I'm fine. I don't need a hug from my dad. Shut up. Shh. I'm here.